All right. In this video, uh, we're just going to go through the actual calculation um, that's needed to uh, get a temperature uh, measurement out of the Stefan Boltzmann equation, which, if you recall, is simply when a object, in our case, we're going to say an idealized black body, so our emissivity is going to, we're just going to set that to one. But basically, when an object is at thermal equilibrium, the temperature of that object is proportional to the energy absorbed slash emitted. And when you're at thermal equilibrium, the amount of energy you're emitting, because you have a temperature, is the same as the amount of energy you're absorbing. And both those guys can be related to your temperature, which is this, this T term right here. T raised to the fourth power in this equation multiplied by this guy here, the Stefan Boltzmann constant, which is this number here, this 5.67 times 10 to the negative 8 watts per meter squared per Kelvin raised to the fourth power. That is what we're dealing with. And so uh, oftentimes I give you guys um, examples like this. So this is of some planet, planet X, and the question is what is the temperature of planet X? And I give you this information. I give you the information about the solar constant, the albedo, 32%, which means that of the incoming solar radiation, 100% that's coming in, 32% of that actually gets reflected off. And so what's remaining in our simplified case, we're only thinking about energy that either gets reflected, which albedo tells about, or absorbed. So if 32% gets reflected, then 68% is actually going to be absorbed and contribute to raising the temperature of the planet. And then this is this equation that we we're just looking at. Again, the constant given there. So uh, we can break this down and end up with the temperature, but I'm actually going to take you guys through the individual steps to make that happen, just to make sure everybody's on the same page. So the solar constant, this is the incoming energy from the sun, right? And so the, for our particular situation, this is given as 500 watts per meter squared. And this is going to depend on the output of the sun, the distance of the planet from the sun, and so on. But this is given, in this case, is 500 watts per meter squared. The albedo is also given as 32%. And since I just talked about that's the amount that gets reflected, you know, 100 minus the albedo will give you the remaining that gets absorbed, which in this case is 68%. So we would do 500 times 0.68 to get to this 340. And I'm actually going to bring out the calculator and we're going to do this. Okay, so um, the solar constant, right, it's 500. And then we're going to multiply it by this 0 0.68, 0 0.68. And we end up with 340. Fantastic. And it's 340 watts per meter squared because that's what's coming in with the solar constant. So that's the energy, and 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 or that's this information, and we know because it's at thermal equilibrium that that amount is equal to what's being admitted is equal to what's being absorbed. And since that's the case, we're at thermal equilibrium. We can set this 340 watts per meter squared term equal to the Stefan Boltzmann constant times the temperature raised to the fourth power. And again, the Stefan Boltzmann constant is simply 5.67 times 10 to the negative 8 watts per meter squared per Kelvin to the four times temperature to the four, right? So we just substitute this guy in for this guy. Here's T to the four. Here's T to the four. Interesting. Okay, so what we need to do is we need to isolate out T because that's what we're ultimately trying to get at. What is the temperature of planet X? So we want to get T by itself. So we're going to divide both sides by sigma. Divide this side by sigma. Divide this by guy by sigma. If you divide this by sigma, it just goes away. And But on this side, it's going to be 340 divided by sigma will equal T to the fourth. All right, there's a, there's a number. It's 5.67 times 10 to the negative 8. How do we do that? Well, it's going to depend on your particular calculator. But the way we can do it on this guy is just simply saying 340, right? divided by, I'm going to use the parentheses here, divided by 5.67 times 10, and I'm going to use this raised guy here. It might be a, a little uh, carrot, like a little triangle looking thing on your calculator, but raised to the 8th power, and it's not the 8th, it's the negative 8th power. And then I'm going to do a close parentheses on that. And then I'm going to say equals Ah, and I get this giant number, and I'm happy because this is this big number, and this is now t raised to the fourth power. And so what I got here, 5.996 times 10 to the ninth k4 is equal to t4, well, that's this same number. How do I know that? If I take the decimal place and I just count, and if I move it over, 
One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Right? 5.99 times 10 to the ninth. 5.99 times 10 to the ninth. Okay? But this is the temperature raised to the fourth power. I don't want to know what it is raised to the fourth power. I want to know what it just is. Right? And so to get that, I need to basically uh, raise this guy to the one fourth power to get it down to just what it is itself. Because if it's raised to the fourth power, and if we multiply this by 1 over 4, um, we're going to break that down. And so the way we do this on the calculator is, so I've got this guy here, right? So this number I want to raise to some kind of power. It's already raised to the fourth power. I don't want that to be to the fourth power anymore. So I'm going to actually raise it to the, and I'm going to do this in parentheses, 0.25, right? Because that's 1 fourth. I'm going to close that guy, and I'm going to say equal. And I got 278.275, 278 degrees Kelvin. I could do it that way. I could do it another. I'm going to square this two times, which would be like getting back to the fourth power. This is just as a check to show you another way to do it. So we're, we're right back to our number that we were before. Because it's raised to the fourth power and I want to just get to t itself, I can take the square root of that guy twice. So I've got this big number from the previous step. I take the square root once. I take the square root again. That's another way to get to this 278, which is the answer in degrees Kelvin. Again, your calculator might be slightly different, uh, but that's just how to actually run through the steps on the, the computer's calculator to end up with what you want the answer to be. Please practice with your own calculator so that you're good to go. Mahalo.